why? Why should it be so hard for two people who love each other to uh, help each other do something that they both want and that's so obviously good for both of them? That's the question that we've addressed a lot in our research over the last 20 years. Here's what we do. Uh, we've worked together for the last couple decades, and we study couples, often married couples, but not always, often young married couples, but we've studied relationships at all, of all stripes at all uh, levels and durations. For a lot of this work, what we ask the couples to do is to come into our research rooms. We give them a lot of questions while, we're with, while they're with us, but we also leave them alone to have interactions, to have uh, discussions that we record, but we're not there while they're having those discussions. What we ask them to do is talk about, to identify and talk about personal issues that they want to work on and change as individuals. Even though couples are allowed to talk about any personal goal in their life at all, most couples, the majority of our couples, end up talking about one thing and one thing only, and that's their health. They know from prior experience that it's not easy to eat right and move more on a regular basis. They routinely, all the time, turn to one another for the help and the encouragement and the advice and the support that they need to make these good habits really stick in their lives. Well, we've spent what seems like years of our lives in front of screens watching these videotapes. And going in, we expected that they were going to be pretty heartwarming. After all, what could be more loving? What could be more affectionate? than two people working together to live long and healthy lives into the future. That was our prediction, and it turns out we were completely wrong about our prediction. Uh, some couples were successful, and as we watched their tapes, we were really optimistic about them, and we could see that they were working together, they were teaming up, they were really joining forces to take care of one another. And, and as we studied those couples a year or two later, we could see that they were uh, looking healthy, they were telling us they were feeling good, and they had moved on to talk about other issues, ways of making other improvements in their lives. Unfortunately, those couples were in the minority. More often, we saw, what we saw in these tapes were couples who, even though they genuinely wanted to support each other's efforts, ended up getting in each other's way instead. What we found were that these conversations were far more emotional than they or we had ever expected. We saw couples returning to the same topics year after year without making progress, getting more and more frustrated with each other and with themselves. And we saw that what had once been minor health concerns were growing more and more serious with each passing year. At first we thought that if we were going to be able to help couples like this, that we would have to teach them all kinds of different complicated communication strategies to st steer their way through these problems. But as we watched the videotapes more and more, we realized that couples kept getting stuck in the same places over and over again. And we taught ourselves how to see these sticking points. And we realized that all of the traps really fell down to just three things. There were just three, three traps, three places where people were getting stuck. And what we want to do today is describe those three traps for you. And to show you that once you can recognize these three traps, there's some pretty effective ways for avoiding them altogether.